Hello and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Apostle Linda Lyracy. I want you to get your Bibles out because we're going to have a Bible study. You know, we need more teaching in the body of Christ. We need scriptural teaching uh, because actually the word says that it is the implanted or the engrafted word of God that saves your soul. Of course, we are born again when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. Supernaturally, our spirit man is made alive to the spirit of God. But then we get into a process of saving our soul. And by that, I mean saving our emotions, saving how we think, delivering um, ourselves out of lies that we have aligned ourselves to. And it is the word of God that sets people free. Jesus says that if you follow him, if you know his word, if you study his word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But you have to study his word. You have to know his word and the truth will set you free and that you are his disciples. That's the characteristic of a disciple of Christ is that they know the word of God. They have it hidden in their hearts. They may not know exactly where the reference is uh, or where it is perfectly in the word of God, but they know it is in the word of God and they can find it. So today we're going to be talking about gratefulness, having a heart of thanksgiving. Gratefulness is extremely important if you're going to enter into your promised land if you are going to enter into the destiny that Christ has for you. Now, this is an appointed time. We are in a season. Now, today, for me, this is October the 6th, I think. Yes. And so we're moving in uh, the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Shelters. This is a great time in the Lord uh, that is set apart for us to be particularly thankful for the faithfulness of God in our life. This is a time where we begin to think about, Lord, look where you've brought me. Uh, I'm not uh, where I want to be, but I'm so far from where I used to be. And I'm so thankful, Lord, for what you've done in my life how you've consistently delivered me, how you've brought me out of darkness into light. And I know, Lord, that you're going to continue to do this. So to be a disciple of Christ, you maintain an attitude of gratitude. And this just doesn't happen magically. You have to make a decision. You have to be very intentional about being a grateful person to surround yourself with people who are thankful as well but also to make sure the atmosphere that you carry is one of thankfulness because that's the atmosphere that Jesus carries. And if we want to be on his frequency, if we want to be on his wavelength, so to speak, we need to be moving in an attitude of reflection, uh, thinking about remembering how he's always helped us, how he's always been there. Even when circumstances have been negative, we still know that when we're in a trial, we count it all joy because we're going to come out of the trial and our faith is going to be made stronger. This is very important. And you have to make a decision that this is the kind of person that you're going to be. Um, if you read Psalms 106, and I'm not going to get into that today, but it is talking about Israel murmuring in their tents when they were on the way to the promised land. And that they were in their tents and they were murmuring. They were saying wicked things. They were talking about uh, Moses in a very negative way. And they were speaking against God. And they were speaking about how hard it was. Instead of trusting in the promises of God to get them to their promised land, they murmured and they complained. And because they did that, they were not able, that generation was not able to enter their promised land. The Old Testament is for our learning. We can see it in natural circumstances as we carry it, it into our spiritual lives that we too must be people that don't complain, but people who are very thankful. And as I said earlier, we're in the Feast of Tabernacles, and that's all about 
uh, being in your tent, being in your shelter. And what the, the Jewish people will do during this time, or, or did do as they celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles, they would have a tent and they'd go outside and the tent would be opened on the top and they would just lay down and they would look up through the tent and they would see the stars in the sky and they would just begin to count their blessings and, and, and talk about how faithful the Lord has been to them. And so this is an attitude that we should always have, but particularly in this time of the year. And it's appointed for us to look at our life. If you're like me, you've lived a long time and you have so much to be thankful for. Uh, you don't remember so much the bad and the horrible times, but you remember how the Lord delivered you out of those bad and horrible times. You remember his goodness and his grace. And you do that if you have a thankful attitude. So again, we're looking at how to enter our destiny, how to become a true disciple of Christ, and it's going to require a lifestyle of having an attitude, moving in the new man, putting on the new man, an attitude of gratitude. So we're going to look at declarations today, and this is helpful. So I want you to say with me, I will be thankful. So begin to put that in your heart and speak, I it. will be thankful. Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. That is a command. That's not a suggestion. Apostle Paul was a disciple, a follower of Jesus, very powerful man of God, highly anointed, and he understood the power of thanksgiving. We enter into the gates of the Lord, into the authority of the Lord by being thankful, and we enter into his courts with praise. And so he says you have to let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Always look at the peace of Christ. Always invite the peace of the Lord. Don't lose your peace. Stay in the peace of Christ. Let the peace of Christ be the umpire of your heart, if you would. And be thankful. Maintain thankfulness. And you're going to have to do that in this world. We are in this world, surely, but we're not of this world. And the scripture says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So we understand that there are going to be very negative things that happen to us because we happen to live in the world. But because they happen to us, that doesn't mean that we have to submit to them, that we have to lose our peace because of them. We actually overcome them because the Holy Spirit in our life is so much greater than the things of the world, the law of the world. Uh, the travail of the world, the adversities or the afflictions of the world. The man or woman of God that maintains the peace of Christ and who has a thankful attitude knows how to overcome the adversities of this life. Uh, Colossians 3.17 And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Very powerful here again. Every part of our life we should do to the glory of the Lord. Uh, not only our actions, but our words. Our words are extremely important. Our words come out of what's in our heart. And the power, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That is extremely important for you to remember that's why you cultivate in your life a thankful heart. Because if your heart is thankful, your words won't be words of death. They will be words of life. And so, again, he says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. And while you're doing it, give thanks to God, um, our Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5, 18, 21 be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, 
you're going to have a thankful attitude. Now, when you start to complain, you become very negative. That is a cue for you that you're not being filled with the Holy Spirit. You're actually quenching the Holy Spirit or grieving the Holy Spirit. You do not want to quench the Holy Ghost. Quench the fire of the Holy Ghost. Quench the fruit of uh, the Holy Spirit in your life. So you always want to give thanks. The scripture says, be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And this is how, verse 20, always give thanks to Father God. For every person he brings into your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's important that we do not come against people with the words of our mouth. It's very important that we do not accuse people. We do not treat people negatively, even though people may treat us negatively or speak against us. We have to have a very thankful attitude because when we begin to judge or complain or come against people or want to get revenge against people because people have treated us badly or, or, or whatever, that is going to quench the Holy Spirit in our life. And we don't want to do that. And we need to cultivate a different response to be thankful. Because the Lord will even use negative situations in your life for your good. Because you're called according to his purpose. And because you love the Lord. Now Satan wants you to complain and come against and judge people. Speak evil of people. Most people when in the world today, if they're treated badly, they're going to treat other people badly. Uh, if someone speaks against them, they're going to automatically speak against the person that spoke against them. That is not the way of the Lord. We walk in a different spirit, don't we? We walk in the light and we need to walk in the light because God is light. We always want to stay in the frequency of the Father. If we get out of that frequency, if we get out of that light, our prayers are hindered. And we're unable to come before the presence of the Lord because of a bad attitude. So it's very important, again, Scripture says, always give thanks to the Father for every person he brings into your life. And out of your reverence for Christ, be supportive of each other in love. That includes people in your family who may speak against you. It includes people in the body of Christ who may speak against you, unfortunately. Somebody may be very immature, spiritually immature in the body of Christ. We have people at all levels in the church of Jesus Christ. And we have to be an example. And when people come against you, and sometimes brothers and sisters in the Lord who have not grown up in God, who have deep abiding wounds may speak against you, but you walk in a different spirit. You maintain a supportive attitude toward that person. You may certainly correct the person. You may certainly show the person that they're not moving correctly or moving in the love of the Lord, but you overlook that transgression. You don't harbor ill will toward that individual. You are supportive of that person in love. Now, that is a strong disciple of Jesus. That's a very powerful disciple in Jesus Christ. So, let's be thankful. Say it with me again. I will be thankful. And we are thankful in every circumstance. The second declaration, which is just as important, is I will reign in my mouth from negativity now your mouth uh, is a part of your flesh it's part of your body and you have to learn how to keep your body under the spirit and if your body if your tongue has a habit of speaking negative things it's going to speak something negative before you know it and so you have to by the holy spirit you have to monitor your soul your will your emotions and say no you may want to speak something negative. It may come up very quickly, but you have to learn how to rein it in. That's learning temperance. That is a mature Christian. You may think 
something, but everything you think, you don't need to speak. You catch yourself and you hold yourself back from speaking it. Because again, as I said earlier, death and life are in the power of your tongue. So Psalms 50, 19 through 23 shows us why we need to reign in our mouth. It says, uh, you give your mouth free reign for evil. Not a good thing. You give your mouth free reign for evil. You sit and speak against your brother. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was one like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this, you who forget God. What this is saying is the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is in you. And so he may be silent while you're speaking against someone, but he witnesses that. People in the Lord uh, who are filled with the Holy Spirit may witness that as well. And they may keep silent, but they are seeing what you're doing. Notice people that when you start to speak evil of people, and a person is next to you, a brother or sister, Lord, see what they do. Do they join in with you? Or do you immediately see them draw back and not join in with the negativity that's coming out of your mouth? Then it goes on to say, verse 23, the one who offers thanksgiving as a sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. So what is that talking about? Most people who speak evil of other people are speaking evil because that person they're speaking against spoke evil against them. They're walking in the same type of spirit. Somebody rejects you, and then you reject the person who rejects you. Somebody said something ugly about you, and so you spout something ugly back to them. As a disciple of Christ, when that happens to us, and it will happen because we live in a very imperfect world, it may happen in the body of Christ. Somebody may, your brother and sister may speak against you. More likely, it will be somebody on the outside. Uh, you may get a, a horrible uh, retort uh, on your Facebook page. Who knows? People are very divisive these days, and many people who don't know the Lord have a lot of chutzpah to put out a lot of ugly things, not only on Facebook, but face-to-face -face with people. Now, you've seen that recently on television, but we are told never to move in that same kind of spirit. Uh, Jesus didn't do that. He said for us to bless our enemies. So we should train ourselves, train our souls, our emotions to get under the power of the Holy Spirit. And instead of spouting off at people, we should learn to give a sacrifice of thanksgiving. So what is a sacrifice of thanksgiving? It's going to be a sacrifice for you to thank the Lord for that individual. To bless that individual. To even say, thank you, Lord, that this happened to me. Thank you, Lord, that I fell into this temptation. Because, really, Father, it's going to help me. It's going to get my faith stronger. Learn how to give an offering of thanksgiving, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Actually, thank God in the midst of very uh, negative circumstances. This is very powerful. And because if we learn to do that, that means our attitude gets adjusted. We move in the new man. We move in the light of the Lord. And then we are in the presence of the Lord. And the scripture says that God will show us his salvation. He will deliver us. And we always want to be delivered out of adversity. So we have to maintain a very thankful attitude. This is a mature mark of a disciple of Jesus Christ. Learn how to give a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Rain your mouth from negativity. 
Philippians 2, 14, do all things without grumbling or disputing. James 5, 9, do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. In other words, the judge, the Lord God Almighty, your, your Papa Father, your, your Papa Daddy, your Papa God, is right at the door. He's very close to you. And when you want to speak evil of somebody, you need to rein that in because the Lord is there. But also Satan is there. He's there too. Devils are there. And when you begin to speak negatively, you're speaking a curse. The enemy is fueled by the words of a curse. And so when you get ready to go before the Lord and you want a favorable judgment from the Father, Satan is right there accusing you in front of your Father God because he's seen what you've done. He's also seen you speak idle words. And we understand that for every idle word, idle word meaning just things that are coming out of your mouth that are negative and they have no power, um, of, from the Lord, they're not energized from the Lord. They're not definitive words of life. You're just talking. And when there's much talking, uh, there's much sin. You can fall into sin when you're not uh, cognizant of what you're saying, when you're not conscious of what you're saying. And so the enemy hears those words and he can actually use your own words to condemn you before the Father. So let's don't grumble. Don't grumble and do not speak against your brother. Even when your brother has spoken against you, learn how instead to give unto God a thanksgiving offering. Say, thank you, Lord, for my brother. Thank you for him. And I ask that you bless him. And I ask that you help him see the error of his ways. This is how we got to learn how to live. This is how we have an attitude of gratitude which is going to cause us to grow and which is going to open up doors for us to enter into our promised land. Uh, our third declaration, I will give sacrifices of thanksgiving. Again, I want to reiterate that. I will give sacrifices of thanksgiving. In other words, I'm going to rein my mouth from negativity and I will give a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Jonah 2, 9. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 15 through 19. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Here we go again. Somebody does something against you. And uh, maybe somebody a long time ago does something against you. And you may part your ways with that individual. And then later that person reemerges in your life and that person now is asking you to do something for him. Now you have a choice. You can pay back that person um, and not help that person when he's in need because he hurt you. You can take vengeance on that person or you can decide you know what i'm not going to repay evil for evil but i'm a, i'm going to actually do something good that person wants me to help him i'm going to help him i'm going to bless him immediately that change up your atmosphere you're growing in the lord that indicates that you have a heart of thanksgiving and by doing that that is a sacrifice of thanksgiving you're very thankful that you can have an opportunity to bless the same person who has cursed you and that's very powerful and when you do that it opens up doors for you effectual doors for you so that you can enter into the destiny that christ has prepared for you from the foundation of the world verse 16 rejoice always pray without ceasing Give thanks in all circumstances, not just in the positive, but in the negative, for this is the will of God. Do not quench the spirit. 
This is so important because when you're not thankful in a negative circumstance, you quench the Spirit of God. When you're not able to pray and give a thanksgiving offering in the midst of a negative circumstance, you quench the Spirit of God. So you have to learn to do that. Okay, let's reiterate. What must we do? Say with me, I will be thankful. I will rain my mouth from negativity. I will give sacrifices of thanksgiving. And the last, I will remember to give thanks to God and for his people. Don't forget, always remember to give thanks. Ephesians 1.16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Remember people when you pray. Remember people. And thank God for people. The Holy Spirit will bring people to your remembrance. Psalms 103, 2 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Don't forget to thank the Lord for all of his benefits. He's been very, very good to you. He forgives us of our iniquities. He heals our diseases. We may get diseases. But he heals us of those diseases. Now, when you're in times of sickness, don't complain. Don't blame God. Don't say, why me? Keep an attitude of gratitude and thank the Lord for his benefits. And one of his great benefits is that he heals us from our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. And he renews our youth like the eagle. So very powerful. Let's always look through the eye of light. And if we do, our bodies will be full of light. Don't look through the eye of darkness. Reframe how you look at your life. And you're going to do that by cultivating gratitude. Keep an attitude of gratitude. Now may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.